So welcome to tonight's show. Uh, if you're watching the show live, please let us know in the comments uh, where you're watching from and in the comments or in the chat box. Put any questions you have because we'll be glad to answer them. If you're watching on the replay, and this will be up for a replay, do me a favor, uh, put a, any questions you have in the comments and where you're watching in the comments down below. Uh, I check those, and if I can't answer the question, I'll get a hold of Kat, and she can answer the question uh, for us. She's a very helpful person. Um, and if you enjoy videos like this, do me a favor. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. Uh, they, they, they are very encouraging to me when people subscribe, and it helps me keep going. Um, so we have with us today Kat Sorensen, and she's with the uh, Visitors Bureau in Seward, Alaska. And she's going to talk to us a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit of, I should say, she and I are going to talk together about Seward, about the things that there are to do. And uh, so why don't you give us a little bit of your background, Kat, and we'll get started. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Kat Sorensen. And like Ken said, I work with the Seward Chamber of Commerce and Visitors Bureau. I'm the communications director there. So it's my job to kind of explain why Seward is amazing and wonderful and fabulous, um, why it's a good place to visit. <laughs> and I have a very easy job. Seward sometimes sells itself with our beautiful mountains, our accessibility to Kenai Fjords National Park, and then the wonderful people that we have in town here working to make it a better place for visitors and community members. Um, a little bit about myself is I am originally from New Jersey. So every once in a while, I'll start talking really fast and then remind myself that I have to forget a little bit of the East Coast and slow down a little bit. Um, and I moved to Alaska about four years ago to work as a journalist. Um, but over the course of the first year there, I was in Kenai. I realized that Seward was where I wanted to live and where I wanted to make home. And I've been in Seward since then. Oh, well, very nice. Um, like I said, I, you know, we were, I was telling you before the show started that we were in Seward last year, really loved the town. It's just absolutely gorgeous, the area around it. And what's really funny is we hit it on a really bad day. It was gray <laughs> and cloudy, and it was still an amazing place to visit. I, I can't imagine hitting it on a nice sunny day. Um, so Seward's a, obviously a starting and a stopping point for a lot of the north and southbound uh, uh, cruises in the Inside Passage. So why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the things to do in Seward that, that makes Seward such a great place? Yeah, so we are the starting and end point for a lot of cruise ships, but it's 2020 and this summer is looking a little bit different for cruises and things like that. We actually don't have many on the schedule this year. So we're kind of pivoting towards more um, day um, activities and things for people to come into town and do. Uh, we have the railroad that comes straight into town, so that's a really good ride to do there. But also once you're in town, um, the options are pretty much endless, you know? You can hop on a Major Marine or Kenai Fjords tour and head out to the Kenai Fjords National Park and visit some of the hanging glaciers and tidewater glaciers there and see a lot of wildlife. Um, some wildlife that you'd see on those tours are um, orcas, humpbacks, puffins, sea lions, uh, dolls porpoise, uh, a whole wide array of seabirds, and then a lot of really great landscapes. Um, they go to one of my favorite places, which is Holgate Arm in Ialic Bay. And some of them go a little bit further to north to Northwestern. So if you have some time and want to spend it on a boat visiting Kenai Fjords National Park, that's a really great place to start. You can also visit the National Park by heading to Exit Glacier, which is accessible with a 15 minute uh, car ride down Exit Glacier Road. And then once you get to the National Park there, there's a one mile walking loop down below that's paved and easily accessible for wheelchairs or those who are a little bit um, disabled to get up and get a view of the glacier without um, too strenuous of a trail. And you can see the entire, um, the entire toe of the glacier from there and then look up and see the glacier. Um, it's, Getting a little, it's getting a little farther back, so the view's a little bit harder to see, but it's still there and a wonderful vista for anyone interested in seeing a glacier up close. 
And then outside of the national park, we have a lot of great options as well. We have the Alaska Sea Life Center in town, which is perfect for one of those rainy days. Like Ken was saying, he found himself here on. That is a research facility and open aquarium, uh, open to the public aquarium. So you can come in and kind of see the different research opportunities going on. There's usually a um, animal who has recently been rescued. We've had beluga whales or um, walruses there that you can watch in the stages of their rescue and rehabilitation. And there's also a lot of different, um, different exhibits uh, and ways to interact with the sea life in Seward and the surrounding areas. And then outside of that, it's kind of a choose your own adventure. You know, there's the waterfront path, which is a paved one and a half mile path along Resurrection Bay, which also has a lot of great wildlife opportunities. Um, on one of my afternoons, just going along the water path, uh, waterfront path, you can see humpback whales. You usually see a couple of otters and those are my favorite. Um, you can spot birds from there as well, seals and different sea animals and um, aquatic life. So a lot of, lot of really cool opportunities to spot um, wildlife in and around Seward. Um, let me think. Oh, we also um, are the mural capital of Alaska. I always forget this part because the murals are just um, everywhere. So they become intrinsic um, day to day of my life. But throughout town, there's uh, murals painted by different Seward residents and locals, whether it's groups or specific artists. And they're scattered throughout our downtown and harbor. So you can go around and check those out on different tours and visit each one of those and read a little bit of history about them and see something that really makes Seward unique. And then if you wanted to explore some more, Seward City Tours is a fully accessible um, bus line that operates our Seward City shuttle and historical tours as well. So they'll take you to some of the places that we talked about just now and they'll also give a little history. Uh, Jonah is the owner of that and he's lived here his whole life and was born and raised in Seward. So he has a lot of really unique insights to the town and history and things like that. Um, so Seward City Tours is a really great way to get around um, accessibly and easily. And then um, if you wanted to go on a halibut charter or fishing, a lot of our fishing charters are accessible and able to get on and off the boats and then go out to some of the outer lying areas to find halibut. And those fish are a little bit tougher to find. You gotta, gotta know where they live and where they like to hide out. So the charters are a really great way to get on there and head out to those farther outreaches of Resurrection Bay and bring home a big halibut fish. You know, you can be eating that for probably the next couple of months if you catch one big enough. Um, I think those are some of the things that pop into my head right off the bat. Ken, did you have any questions or maybe think of ways to make me remind some other things of, that you can do in Seward? <laughs> well, yeah, and we'll, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll, let's talk, I'll talk about the halibut. Um, we went halibut fishing in Icy Strait Point last year with my granddaughter, and I say we went fishing. We didn't go catching. <laughs> um, you know, and, and again, that was one of the things, and, and I was telling um, Kat earlier that if I had a, my my way, if I was doing the trip again and when I do it the next time, one of the things I'll do is I'll spend more than one night there. We um, When we came in, we took the, the Alaskan train the railway in from Anchorage. And, and I will say this, that even on a really sorry day, it was rainy and cloudy and low clouds. That was still the most amazing train. And I'm a train fan. I, I mean, it, it, given my choice, I travel by train all the time. Mm -hmm. and it was really amazing, the views, the things that you saw. The, the You go through this canyon that, uh, you know, they, they carved a shelf to put the track on, and it's just barely wide enough. And, you know, big uh, river down below. Uh, I don't remember the name of it right now, but you go by a glacier. I think it's is it Spencer Glacier that you go by. Yeah. <laughs> And, and so it, it's just an amazing trip. Um, for those that do travel with challenges, I will say this, they are very good. They have an elevator on the train so that they can get a wheelchair up to the dome car because my wife, they she didn't ride in the wheelchair, but they took her wheelchair up for her. She, uh, she's not a fan of elevators. But, um, you know, so they did a really good job. And then they have an elevator uh, to get you off of the train in Seward. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Have you seen that? 
Yeah, I've seen that in action before. It's such a cool way to go about it and make it an accessible experience for everyone. Yeah. So okay, Pam, so yeah. Uh, Pam, is, Pam saying she's got a cruise ending in Whittier, Whittier, and she's planning on getting to Seward for a cruise back to Vancouver in 2021. Um, okay, so so uh, for if you're going back, um, for a good place to stay, and, and there probably are more choices. We stayed, is it Harbor 360 in? Yeah, there's the Harbor 360 Hotel um, right in the waterfront, and that's owned and operated by the same people who do major marine tours. So if you did want to go on one of those super accessible tours, you'd be able to get a package to do both of those while staying there and heading out to the cruises. We also have a lot of really unique accommodations in Seward that are accessible. We're lucky that we're a pretty flat community, except for one big hill in the middle. So um, a lot of our... Um, accommodations are ground floor and um, super accessible. So if you see most of the most of the bookings on things online that you would go book, I would definitely recommend just asking if they're accessible and um, how they can accommodate your needs when arriving. But Harbor 360 Hotel definitely is a good option for those looking for that hotel experience right by the harbor. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things that I liked about it. I, sh I should have popped up some pictures of it. But it is, you know, it is right there on the waterfront. In fact, one of the things that, that struck me and its picture went on my Instagram right away was I got up um, and in the morning and, you know, in, the, in my cruise ship is just sitting out there yeah. across this little marina, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's where I'm going in a few minutes. And there was a couple in the night before, but, you know, mm -hmm. when you see your ship tied up at the dock and you're eating breakfast, it's, that's a good start to the morning. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing is, is, is the harbor is real, or the I should say, the cruise terminal is real easy to get to from town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we um, we just got a taxi, and you know they put Cheryl's chair in the back, and it was it was quick and easy. They were going to do a bus, but I'm I, I'm I like to get on as early as I can because I like to get in on the ship and have lunch. So, you know, so we we just took a taxi and went over the the hotel runs a shuttle, mm -hmm. and, and it had been about another hour hour and a half, but it wasn't. You know, again, not very far. It wasn't very expensive to get the cab to get over there. Mm -hmm. um, Pam said, "What is the best to do on land?" So I'll give I'll give my two cents worth first, Pam, and and then we'll, we'll give the real expert a chance. <laughs> um, you've got to go to the, uh, the the Sea Life Center. That is just such an amazing place. Uh, they had uh, uh, when we were there last year. They had just brought in a seal that some some boys had found. Uh, somewhere, you know, uh, a long ways away, but it needed to be rehabilitated and it, it wasn't native to the area. And they were in, they had it in there where they were rehabilitating it. And you've got the puffins and you have all of these amazing exhibits of the different kinds of sea life that's there in that area. Um, if you've got a sunny day, they have a tremendous deck outside mm -hmm. where you can sit there and, and you'd be able to see whales and, and, and see the, the ocean. Um, so give us some more things to do there, Kat. Yeah, my favorite thing to do on land is definitely visiting the National Park. We have a really great visitor center down by the harbor that opened up last year that's new and kind of inter very interactive and allows the opportunity to explore um, the National Park in ways that you wouldn't really get to um, through information and um, by learning a lot about the Alaska Native groups. Um, and then also the other visitor center for the national park is out at Exit Glacier. And Exit Glacier is a wonderful, um, beautiful thing. You, you can get right up close to this historic piece of ice and kind of feel the magnitude of it. And the trails along there are really wide and paved and super easy to get through. And once you're in front of this Magnemus uh, Glacier, it's kind of breathtaking. I've been out there probably dozens and dozens of times, but each time it, it looks different, it feels different, it's always changing. So it's a really exciting opportunity to be able to see that um, and learn a lot of information on that as you visit the visitor center at both the harbor and at Exit Glacier. There's also these really cool signs as you're going into the national park that tell you where the glacier was in each decade. 
So as you're driving in, you'll see a sign that says 1860, and that's taken from historical data to show that that's the furthest point of the glacier in 1860. And then you'll be driving down and seeing that glacier receding. And it's a really cool way to experience history and experience the national park through time. So I would definitely recommend heading out there. Um, so the Sea Life Center one day, um, Exit Glacier the next, and then on the if you spend a second night and a third day, I definitely recommend just checking out our downtown. We have a lot of great local shops with local artisans and our historic downtown is just full of unique things. You can get earrings or a delicious fish and chips meal, um, explore these old buildings that have been around since the start of Alaska. And it's a really cool opportunity to just get around and um, immerse yourself in the local community. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. We found the, the downtown. We didn't spend a lot of time shopping because we were dead tired when we got in. And um, and I made the mistake. I, I, it was kind of a rainy day. And so going from the Sea Lion Center, rather than taking the boardwalk around, mm -hmm. I decided to cut across town. Okay. My, wife has a, my wife has a manual wheelchair. Oh, that's a big hill yeah. in the middle there. <laughs> yeah, um, and so it was a pretty good little hill pushing her up. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't impossible, but uh, you know, by the time we got back, we got to our hotel. And one of the things, and, and Pam, I don't know if you're coming in on the train. If you have that option, uh, I would say that's that was what I would do. I'd go from Whittier into Anchorage, and then pick up the train from mm -hmm. from Anchorage back to to uh, Seward if you know if it fits in your budget. Um, like I said, it, it works. It'll work with the scooter. It works with a wheelchair very easily. But, um, you know, so we didn't do a lot of shopping. You know, my wife mm -hmm. and my granddaughter did a little bit. They really enjoyed the shopping there. I thought I thought the, the town is just full of interesting architecture. And, and I thought it was it was really cool just walking through town, you know, even up over the hill with with the wheelchair. It was just kind of um, like I said, I, I found it a very interesting place. I would like to come back. I, I was telling Kat, I think before the show started, that my next time I will do a northbound cruise, wind up in Seward, and and spend a couple of days there, or maybe three or four days there, and do some fishing, and mm -hmm. uh, just to, to go back. Um, to get to Exit Glacier with a – and Pam, is my memory correct that you take a scooter? Um Hopefully she'll answer here in a second. But anyway, um, for somebody that does travel with a scooter, um, is how difficult is it to get to Exit Glacier or does the bus run out there? So you can get a trip with Seward City Tours to bring you out to Exit Glacier. And Seward City Tours is accessible. And they do a package that includes all of these um, items. Actually, let me just pull it up so I can be a hundred percent sure, but Seward City Tours and all of their buses are accessible, but they'll um, bring you out to the glacier. They'll bring you to the Sea Life Center and they'll bring you to the Harbor. So you can experience all of those without your own vehicle. So you can be on the bus and you get a set amount in time at each, but the ticket to the Sea Life Center is included and then lunch in the Harbor is included as well. So that would be an easy way to do the um, tour um, at Exit Glacier, if you needed avail if you needed a ride out there, also all of our cabs will take you out to Exit Glacier. It's about a fifteen minute drive from town. Yeah, um, it's just with a scooter that that a lot of cabs find that a little more challenging. Yeah, that can be difficult. But I do yeah. know, yeah the the Seward City Tour Deluxe Tour. Um, we'll bring you to actually all of the places we talked about. So that would be a great option for anybody with a scooter or wheelchair that needed to get around. Um, you can go to Exit Glacier, the Sea Life Center, and downtown, um, all with a ride in between. Yeah. And I was going to say, and, and from, from our perspective, the Sea Life Center was totally accessible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was very easy for my wife to get around. Uh, in fact, most of the time she wheeled herself. She could, my wife's not bound to the wheelchair, but when we're mm -hmm. traveling any real distance, she, she winds up using it. Um, and, and I would say, Pam, that in a scooter, you would love the, love the town because, again, it's, it's just so easy to get around. Um, and we do have a waterfront path that circumnavigates the entire town with not, not as many hills as uh, Ken, Kent went up. But from there, you can, you can explore and see a lot of different um, wildlife and different aspects of the historical downtown. Yeah. So I, anyway, like I said, uh, we, we really enjoyed it. Um, 
so uh, if somebody was going to come and do a land package there, you know, and, and so for those that are not necessarily people that uh, always cruise, um, yeah. what is the, if you're going to do a land, uh, okay, Pam said she's bringing her folding uh, scooter, so that makes it easy. Um, so if in the event that you were coming in to do a land package, um, and so let's say we had, you know, four or five days there. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about the things in town, but what's what starts to be close, you know, in the surrounding area? If you were going to use Seward as, as your base, what mm -hmm. could you explore as you go out around Seward a little ways? Yeah. So if you wanted to explore out and around Seward, um, some cool options um, near the Exit Glacier Road area is we have some dog sledding kennels that operate out there so you can go out and visit the puppies and meet with the dog sled operators and i'm not sure how accessible they would be but they do offer um tours um on golf carts that they, they get the dogs to pull so those are really cool options out there but even just going out and seeing the excitement that the puppies and the dogs have is a really great opportunity i i bring family out there all the time and they're like oh i don't want to just go see dogs i'm like you want to see these dogs they're great um so that's a fun opportunity outside of town and then going further if you make seward your home base as you move outward there's a lot of cool um a lot of cool spots to go visit and see salmon jumping and going to their breeding grounds. So we have a fish weir out at Bear um, Bear Lake. So you can go and check that out uh, and you'll see the, the salmon hopping in and going over the weir into the river. And that's awesome too, because sometimes if you travel a little further down, you can go to Bear Lake. And the first, first part of that is um, accessible and pretty easy to navigate. And from there you can see, um, sometimes see bears, which is always fun, but from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the cool part is that bear, uh, that bear Lake Weir right at the front there as you're pulling in. And then moving out further is, um, more, more weirs. We have a lot of weirs. <laughs> but if you were going into the Cooper Landing area and using Seward as your home base, that's about an hour, um, hour 15 drive from Seward, which has a lot of opportunities for river fishing. And um, there's a very nice uh, trail, the Russian River Trail, that is mostly paved to a beautiful waterfall where there's salmon that jump there as well in the during the salmon run. So there's a lot of cool opportunities spanning out from Seward, but there is also a lot of um, driving there. Uh, our nearest town is about a half an hour, 45 minutes away once you leave the city uh, of Seward. So cool stuff to do if you poke around on the sides and um, go off course and get into nature a little bit and see the bear weirs or hop on a nice trail, but really cool opportunities. Yeah, you know, you were talking about the dog sled. Um, we did that at uh, Michelle Phillips, who runs the Iditarod and some of the other major races. She has a training school at Tucci Lake up in the Yukon Territory, oh, cool. and they pull little UTVs around. Oh, and, nice. You know, it, it, the thing that amazed me uh, about that, and again, it worked really well because they brought the vehicle right up where my mm -hmm. wife could get in it easily. You know, it just it worked really well, but it amazed me how much those dogs want to run so much. Oh, they were the, the dogs whose turn. It wasn't, were losing their minds yelling. It's my turn. It's my turn. I want to go. You know, I mean, it was, it was just so, such fun. We really enjoyed uh, our time with Michelle. She did a good job of telling us about life on the Iditarod and then the, the dogs. And, and then again, we, we played with the puppies and cuddled yeah, them. And, the puppies are so so cool. and they just, yeah. they, to go you're right you'll you'll be going and doing laps sometimes around and the other dogs will just be yelling at you like i want to go <laughs> it's so cool yeah it, it is it is very very uh, amazing we um there's so many things to do so um if we wanted to watch see well i'll ask you a couple more questions uh, first of all if i was coming up to do a fishing trip because i always throw in things that interest me as well <laughs> so I'm coming on the northbound. I'm going to get off and Seward off of whichever cruise line I'm taking. Mm -hmm. And I want to go, I want to do some salmon fishing and halibut fishing. When's the best? Now I know, uh, let's see, June 15th is a good time to catch uh, reds. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> <laughs> so I've been I've been doing some red fishing myself over here. We're we're toward the tail end of the red run, and my my freezer isn't as filled as I would have liked by now. But I'm happy with what we've been catching so far. Um, but for reds, and then we get some. Um, some kings over here as well and halibut is a really great attraction as well as rockfish and um a lot of people forget about rockfish but they're some of my favorite fish to eat but around like june 15th to june 30th we actually have the seward halibut tournament started today so that's a two-week tournament to see who catches the biggest fish. But within this time period, you have the opportunity to catch king salmon. You also have the opportunity to catch halibut, rockfish, and um, reds if you went snagging. Also, uh, then again, in August, we have our silver salmon run. So that's another great chance to catch the salmon. And a lot of our charters will do... Um, a combo trip where you can go out for rockfish, halibut, and silver salmon to do the whole shebang while you're out there on the boat, get the best bang for your buck, and a bunch of different type of fishing. Um, so August, as well as right now, June 15th to June 30th. Okay, so um, the last half of June and then August. Now, yep. um, what's, your, what's peak whale season? Because I know you guys do have humpbacks and orcas, right? Yep. So we have orcas that travel throughout Resurrection Bay all summer long. We have a couple of different pods, um, the resident pods and then the transient. So the cool thing with our orca population is that our captains all work together. We have a channel on the radio for all the boats where people announce when and where they're seeing wildlife. So the orcas are a little hard to predict with seasons, but we have a fleet of captains out there who want to make sure you have the best time. So they'll say, hey, Ken, um, saw some orcas over at Spire Cove. You should head over there in the next couple of minutes. And then that tour will be able to go see those as well. Um, humpbacks usually um, show up around April. I saw the first humpback this year on Easter Sunday. So um, within those first three months, um, April, May, June, we see a lot of humpback activity as they come around and eat the bait fish, the hooligans and the herring that are um, swimming in our bay. So that's um, so June is a good time for that then. Um, we've also been seeing a lot of orca activity this month. So I'm, I'm really just talking up June, but orcas and humpbacks do show around in July and August as well. But June is a really good one. So June's a good time. Okay, now, so I want to I wanna get a chance to see bears feeding on salmon by the river safely. What's mm -hmm. a good time of year for that? That would be towards the end of the summer when all of the runs are kind of ending. So um, August 15th around then would be good. So we have a creek, um, Tonsina Creek, where the bears will hang out down there. And then over at Bear Lake, um, with the caveat that you have to do it safely. But you can sometimes see bears along there um, mid-August. Okay. Yeah. And I, in fact, that was it was interesting because we were talking about on the train that they um... – that there's a lot of those rivers that run into Resurrection Bay that the trains yeah. running along, you know, and I, you know, they were saying that they're spawning. You'll see a lot of times on the train, you'll see the bears up in there, you yeah. know, because they'll be up there feeding when the salmon find, you know, kind of get close to their their nesting nesting beds. I guess is what you call yeah. Them. So and also forgive me, I was thinking going off that based off the salmon silver salmon run, but as the reds start to do that as well, um, the bears will be out there eating that. So they will probably be doing that in the next couple of weeks, like mid-July. So probably like July 10th through mid-August is a good time to go see that. And then in like mid-August on, when do the berries start coming? Yeah, early August to the end of the year, the bears move around to start eating the berries up in the alpine. So they start transitioning up. So mid-July to mid-August is good for bears. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds really good. I am. Uh, I'm getting filing away little bits of data to, mm -hmm. to to make my next visit up there. Because, like I said, we really enjoyed your town. It was it was such a oh, yeah. such a nice place. Everybody we thought was very friendly. In fact, it was it was funny because the uh, the person that was driving the bus uh, he was gonna he was doing something else, and we were out there getting ready trying to go to the Sea Life Center, and, and he, he said, "Where are you guys headed?" And we said, "Sea Life Center." He says, "Oh, that's okay. I, I've got room. Come on." So he put us on the bus, and he he, he made like uh, two, I think two drop offs at hotels, and yep. then he went around and took us to the Sea Life Center. They were 
we found everybody to be very friendly, very helpful. And, and like I said, it's just quite a charming little town. Okay, <laughs> Amber, let me ask you, do we have any more questions for uh, Kat? Okay, I, I don't I don't see any more questions. Um, Kat, I really appreciate you being on the show tonight. Uh, you've been a great guest. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. We'll try to get back and, and do this again. If not before next year, uh, next year for sure when I'm planning my trip, it'll be a good time to have another. <laughs> oh, great. Um, and then I just want to let, um, let everybody know that we do have our um, visitor guide, our Seward Alaska visitor guide, which on page 51, we have a great little feature about accessibility, which I think you might recognize that guy right there. Uh, yeah, that's, that kind of look familiar. <laughs> and you can request one of these at our website, seward.com, and get one of those so you can help with that, to help with any and all of your planning. All right. Well, thank you very much, Kat. We appreciate it. Um, that, for all of those uh, that are watching, if you haven't subscribed or if you're watching on the replay and haven't subscribed, um, do me a favor, hit the the, um, the like and the subscribe buttons for me, and we'll see everybody next week. Thanks. Bye. Thanks so much, everybody.